oh no, Mother's Day's tomorrow, and I gotta build a project with the kids. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, and welcome to my shop. I've got my kids in the shop today, so it's going yeah. to be a fun time. And today, uh, tomorrow is going to be Mother's Day, so we are going to make a present together. Aren't we guys? Yeah. <laughs> We're yeah. gonna be making a yeah. bird feeder, a rather large bird feeder. Yeah. Now, if you remember about two years ago, I made a bird feeder with the kids for Mother's Day, and it's gonna be a very similar one, but the one I made before was out of white oak, it was heavy, and it's become, uh, well, I just finished it with boiled linseed oil and paste wax, and over two years being outside, it just doesn't look as good. And so this time I wanna make one out of cedar, and we're going to have a little bit more fun. So today I have a set of plans uh, for this. So if you want them, they are free. Download on my website. I'll leave a link to that down below. We're going to build this whole thing out of a single board. Uh, so this is a one by, one by eight of cedar. Uh, we'll cut all the pieces out of that and uh, show you how to do it. It's a great project for the kids because it's a lot of using little tools and, and just doing through it. It's a basic set of tools. And uh, we'll have a little bit of fun. So let's dive in. So this is the fun part where we get to actually play with the kids and this uh, eight foot long one by eight can be broken down into several other pieces. There's uh, about a half dozen cuts that need to be made cross cut and sometimes the kids just want their hands on the saw and sometimes they actually want to push the saw and I, so I kind of let the kids learn at their own pace. What do they want to do? What do they want to push? Uh, what is, is good for their age? Whereas with Melody, she just goes to town. You give her the saw and, and she'll do the work. Whereas with Arthur, he just wants his hand on the saw and to, uh, to play with it. And then you can see how they just have a, uh, a chance to play around the shop. I just have to make sure that they're being safe and not getting in the way. There are two rip cuts that have to be made for the rails. And this is a chance that I can take them over to the saw bench and let them play with it. Here again, Arthur just wants his hand on it. And I just have to make sure he's safe, keep his legs out of the way. And they have a ton of fun. You can see the smiles on them when they turn their head. Um, JJ more or less just wanted his hand on the saw with this one. He was a little more scared of it. And so if they're frightened of something, I let them back off. Let them do what they're comfortable with. Whereas Melody wanted to do a little bit more. She just didn't have the force to put it into it. Uh, that's what happens when you're seven years old. But uh, she had a lot of fun. The really nice thing about cedar is that it is incredibly easy to work. Uh, it really doesn't take much force at all for the saw to work or for a plane to work. And the kids can learn how is it supposed to feel, what do the curls look like, what does the dust coming off the saw look like, and it's a, it's a learning experience for them. So after cutting all of the things to length and width, we can then come in and smooth them all with the plane. Uh, most of the time I have to hold the plane and make sure that it's square and ready, but then they can get the idea of feeling the front knob and feeling the tote and then seeing what does smooth feel like, how many strokes we have to take to take off all of the saw marks and get it down to nice bare wood. And there's enough that all three of the kids can have their own try and get their own experience with, uh, with doing their own board. And then when they look at the project afterwards, they can say, I planed that board. And it's just one of those happy things. Then for the joinery, we're going to be doing dowel pins. And so I have the side clamped to the top of the bench, and then the bottom is now in the vise. And so I'm using a quarter inch bit to drill through the side and into the bottom. In that hole, then we can put a dowel. And so there'll be three dowels connecting the side to the bottom, giving each of the kids a chance to run the drill. Some of them really just go on their own, and some need a little bit more work. Arthur didn't have quite enough strength to actually turn it by himself. But uh, JJ here, he was having a blast of a time making holes. You mean I can make a hole in that? Yeah, that, that's a happy day for him. <laughs> so after drilling all those holes through, then we can come in with a little bit of a five minute epoxy and put that into the holes. Uh, for my exterior projects, I use epoxy for all my joints. And this doesn't require a whole lot because the dowels actually provide a good amount of strength. But the epoxy, you can put in the hole, then put a dowel in, drive the dowel in, and then uh, flush cut it off. This gives all the kids a chance to uh, pound with a mallet, and some of them are fairly graceful with it, and uh, some of them really, well, they're um, not. And if you be careful, they don't smash my hand. Then they can flush cut off the, uh, the dowel and put it in the next hole and move on. Okay, so we got the sides on, and then suddenly I realized, uh-oh. I forgot to put in the grooves here, because we need two pieces of plexiglass to slide down in these grooves to contain all of the um, all of the bird food. So I have a couple different ideas about how to fix that. Number one, I can cut other strips of wood to fit in here and fill those slots and, and keep them just sliding around. Number two, I could build the whole thing again and cut new grooves. Uh, number three, I could come through and chisel out the grooves. Uh, and there's a lot of other options. And I think the route I'm going to go is chiseling out the grooves. 
Um, though, we're not going to be able to do as much of that with the kids. Um, what I would have originally done is before putting these on here, I would cut the grooves with a grooving plane or a 45 or a Stanley 55. But uh, in this case, we're going to have to do a little bit of carving. Um, because unfortunately, this project has to be done for tomorrow, Mother's Day. Mm. Let's get to it. So for the carving, um, this is basically just cutting a groove with a chisel, no saw needed. I start by making a uh, stop cut at the end and then come down along the sides. And this is a chance for Melody to pound away on it. A little while later, I let her hold the chisel and so she can hold one spot and I hold the other and I go and bevel down and clean out everything in between those two cuts made with the, uh, the chisel marking out the sides and end cut. Once it's been removed out a little ways, then we can repeat the process to go down a little deeper. Uh, make the stop cut, cut the sides, and then remove the material again. Once it's down close to the end, then we can come in with a router plane and punch that out. And you can see how Melody can hold the, the knobs and I can grip it down a little bit lower and we can get most of the way up to the end. And then we just have to use a chisel to clean it the rest of the way up. And it was just a happy experience that so she got to play around with it and do a little bit of uh, tool work that the other kids didn't get to do. After that, we can come in and put the two rails on the side. I'll put one pin into either of the sideboards and then three pins into the bottom board. And this will be what holds the sides together, basically, uh, but then also holds the food in so it doesn't spill out. With that, it is on to adding the finish. And this is the part where I, I really love boiled in oil and paste wax, but it is not a good exterior finish. Um, it will fade very quickly and it isn't very protective. So I'm using this Dex Olio. I, I'm probably mispronouncing that, but it comes in D1 and D2. Uh, the D1, which I'm using right here, soaks into the wood and protects the wood itself from deep inside. Uh, you just keep putting this on and letting the wood soak in. It's very much how you apply boiled linseed oil. Uh, just keep letting it soak in. Once the wood dries, uh, once the wood lets it all absorb, you put more on there and you keep going. Um, until you have uh, some standing on the top that's been there for like 10 minutes or so. Then I'll come with a rag and wipe off everything that's standing and let that dry overnight. And uh, you have a, a really nice color to it. I, I love the color it comes out. It's very close to what boiled in oil does. And it's a really protective finish that can go down deep inside the wood. And then I'm going to come in with the D2. This is a varnish, a marine varnish that will sit on the top and protect the surface so that nothing can get inside. This takes uh, four to six coats. I ended up putting five coats on this one and uh, really pr protects the wood as an actual surface barrier. Whereas the last one soaked down into the wood and, and uh, kept the wood from rotting, this actually keeps everything out so that the wood will last much longer. I'm really, really happy with this finish and I think it's going to become my new exterior finish. So uh, look forward to seeing that in the future when I work on exterior projects. Then once all of it has been finished, we can start putting on the hardware. And uh, we need to pre-drill for all of the screws and the eye bolts on either end. And this is a good chance for the kids to play with the egg beater drill. And some of them go really slow and some of them go really fast. And uh, wow, he's uh, pretty good at that. <laughs> Melody was very cautious and wanted to make sure everything was done just right. But uh, they really like this drill because it makes it a lot easier. Then after that, Melody had enough strength that she could actually drive in a few of the screws uh, before she gave up on it. But uh, putting in the screws, it's a, it's a good skill to learn, being able to rotate your hand and, and drive that in. Once you can manage that, you can manage a lot of other things in the shop. Then after putting that in, we can work on the plexiglass. For the plexiglass, I can cut it by scoring one side, and then I'll flip it over and score the other side at the exact same point. Uh, making sure that these scores are really nice and deep. I'm probably doing 10 to 12 hard pushing cuts from one end to the other. Then I can put it in the vise and start tapping it, bending it slightly, putting a little more pressure until it pops. And uh, then you get a really nice clean surface. And on the second one, it didn't have a perfectly clean surface. There were a few edges. Uh, the nice thing with that is that you can bring a plane in and smooth out the surface. And the plane will actually do fairly nice work on the, uh, on the plexiglass. After that has been done, then we can install them. And this is what made the kids really happy. They kept asking me, can I put the glass in? Can I put the glass in? And now, now you can put the glass in. <laughs> and uh, then it starts to actually look like a bird feeder. You can see how this is going to go, where the, the bird food can go in between the glass and then it'll pour out beside the, the side rails. The last thing we have to do is put on the chain. Uh, so I have a two eye screws that go on either side and that uh, you have to just have to open them up a little bit so you can get the chain on and then close them once they're in place. But this provides another chance for the kids to play around and they can put the, screw, the screwdriver into the eye screw and crank it into place. And uh, it's a very easy thing so any of them could actually turn the handle and had enough force to do it. 
But then you can put the chain on it, hang it up, and uh, you've got yourself a bird feeder. It's uh, pretty much ready to go outside. But because this is Mother's Day, we've got to give it to Mother. So let's go see what Mom thinks. Wow! So there you have it. A fairly simple project. This is a lot of fun to do with the kids as you can teach how to use a saw, how to use a plane, how to use a drill, how to use a brace, uh, or even how to use a grooving plane if you remember to use it at the right time, <laughs> or um, how to carve, which Melody had a little bit of fun with that. And uh, it's, a, it's a great project to just have a little bit of fun. You can do it in an afternoon in the shop with the kids. Uh, if you want to see plans for this, I do have them on my website. They're completely free. You can go and check that out. Also, while you're there, uh, go ahead and check out. I now have t-shirts for sale as well as several other pieces of swag. That really helps out the channel and is a good way to support and get something to show off your wood by right spirit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's about it for today. Um, I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are really one of the big reasons why this channel is still here and going. Uh, if you'd like to help out with that and to keep this going, you can find out more about Patreon right down there. Also, feel free to subscribe, like, share. Those really do help out the channel. And I do have my second channel with uh, more behind-the-scenes footage and some other videos and things like that. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye!